Hi, this is Michael Uslan. You're listening to Batman on Film. I'm vengeance. I have given a name to my pain. Hey now, that's not a good hey now, is it, Lauer? You 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 rate that since you've been watching uh, Larry Sanders' show. We'll give that a like a, a six on the Hank scale. Yeah, it's terrible. Hey now, that was there. You go. Yeah. There it is. Now not we're Howard, up to the nine territory. It's not not it's not Howard <laughs> Stern level. Hey, we're at this is the Batman on Film Social Hour. This is episode fifteen. So whatever you're drinking, again, uh, whatever it is, your beverage of choice. Come here and join us for about 30 minutes or so of miscellaneous talk about Batman and it could that could go off on several tangents in the drop of a hat. So that's that's a possibility. Just be ready. All right. So with me today, I have two senior Batman on film contributors, and they're both named Ryan. Ryan Lauer hey. and Ryan Haas. How how you doing, boys? Hello. Good. Well, doing, I'm doing as great. good as you I'm as good as you can be after that second uh, vaccine shot. I'm kind of like on my second bum day here of like feeling oh, really? weird. But which one did you get? Yeah, mm. I got the Pfizer. Okay, I had Moderna. I had no issues except uh, other than the sore arm, and I was uh, sore arm, and I was worried about it because Rachel got hers like five days before me, her second one, and it was the same one, and she was like knocked her on her ass for like three days, and she yeah. even, like had, couldn't go to work one day. So, yeah, was, and I was like, oh, my God. And then I was fine. So besides Feeling that, loopy and here you are. So who knows what you're going to say? Mm, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Some, who hot knows? Takes. some hot takes today. <laughs> All right. We're going to talk about some some Batman stuff right off the bat. So and I'm going to I'm going to have a little fun with this one, because this last <laughs> week, uh, several the trades, I think. What was it? Uh, the rap was the first to report it. Do you want to even call it reporting? And I saw a lot of the others picked it up. Is that Michael Keaton has now been Ooh. confirmed Ooh. to be Batman, returning as Batman Bruce Wayne in The Flash. And like I, my headline was, again, I used again in there on the confirmation <laughs> part because I, he was always in it. Uh, I think Keaton was having fun messing with people for about the last six plus months right after the people you know. were people were going nuts over that i mean there was that one time where it was like oh i don't know like there's covid uh, if i don't feel like it's gonna be maybe i won't do it i'm like guys this is the same stuff that like pattinson did like these guys are actors yeah and so he there he's gonna be in it he's just saying this because yes. He can because he's Michael Keaton. He's yeah. going to be in it, guys. Like people were just like, "Well, what do you? You said it was confirmed, and now it's not." I'm like, "No, he's in it." Yes, he's <laughs> now, in it. I mean, I, I like yeah. to be fully honest here and a peek behind the curtain that I emailed Bill and even <laughs> True. I, and I was like, "Listen, I don't like how this is being said. All my instincts are saying Keaton wouldn't say this stuff with it being this close to start shooting. If yes, he, he would. A part to the movie. Well, no, I mean like they it legit wouldn't be final like." It has to be finalized when they're a month, less than a month from shooting, especially if he's a big part of the movie. He's a big part of the movie. He's like, but he's, Bill. Like, a, he's like the second lead in the movie. Yeah. And I was like, call my nurse. And he's like, it's fine. He's fine. I'm like, okay, sorry. I don't know. Maybe it's my movie. Uh, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I don't know why, but all my instincts said are like, like yeah, less than a month. This shit's finalized, but um, hooray. Hmm. I don't think we're prepared for, for how. For the nostalgic feels that we're gonna get when we see like legit keep keaton back as batman it is, it's hitting me just right too because for some yeah, reason yeah. the past year i have been so uh nostalgic for 89 and it's i probably blame yeah. the big lego sets 
of the Batwing and the Batmobile. And yeah. it's just constantly got me going back, watching the movie and reading the, the comic deluxe uh, or the comic adaptation just to look at the art. And mm-hmm. I've just and been getting all the, about 89 lately. Yeah. And we're getting the new 89 comics this year with Sam Hamm writing mm-hmm. it and yeah. stuff. And, yeah. you know, I've been watching with Nora and, and, um, it's just really cool. And I even went back in like a couple days ago, uh, I think the 1989 Batman website, they, I think, did newly digitized some of the the EPK uh, press t- video transfers of like B-roll footage from like Batman Returns and Batman. So you can go back and like just watch them film scenes and stuff. Mm. So it's like, oh man, there's like the real Batman, like filming the scenes, like in the movie. And ha- it, you know, there's like a tim burton showing like keaton how he wants him to hold the cape up and stuff like that and it's like it's so it's so cool to see some of that stuff that you in, in in better quality that you've never really seen little clips of like in behind the scenes things you know on tv what what do you what do you all expect to see him i mean aesthetically costume wise and so forth i mean he's gonna have i mean it's pretty obvious i think if you base it on the uh the promo art or the concept art they released at fandom last year it's it's the 89 suit so i'm assuming based on that they are going to have him in that suit at some point right i i think i think so too and we can't expect that keaton now to be the keaton of 89 and kicking ass in that suit but i think definitely you can you can shoot it in a way that you know you get the idea you get the suit and everything uh but i don't think we're going to see him flying all over the place the grapple gun he might kick some kick some thugs but then i i feel like we'll get one scene in that suit and then maybe yeah. transition to uh whatever wherever he's at now I, yeah i i had heard that the timeline it's possible that it's some sort of suit kind of like the kingdom come type thing you know something mm. that allows a 70 year old man to to be Batman because yeah. I mean he's actually 70 years old you know or 69 yeah. you want to be 70s so Haas what do you think I mean it's uh got to have him in 89 at least once right I mean I, yeah I think the sky's the limit on this movie that they it's they can do so much with the the premise of this movie that nothing would really shock me I mean based off of the concept art yeah it makes sense that they would want to be able to find some sort of Kind of like the 89 comics that we're getting. They, it looks like they're taking like elements from both 89 and Returns and meshing them together into like one like complete like 80s, like early 90s. Is that going to be bat can, suit? Is that going to be canon with with the Burton films or no? Or is it its own kind it's of thing? It's supposed to be. Oh, okay. It's supposed to be like Sam Hamm writing like what would have happened after Batman Returns, ignoring the other two. From okay. what I've seen. Okay. Yeah. Because they, they're going to have their own Two-Face and stuff like that. They're going to have like... Yeah. Really Which I find kind of funny because they they shook up what he wanted for Batman and Batman Returns. They're like, hey, now you can... <laughs> what would yeah. you do for the follow-up? Yeah. I would like... Well, obviously, we're also going to see the Batmobile. Uh, that, oh. that, that, car, oh. that car company that supplies... I wrote a story on it, but I forget, I forget the name of it. Um, pictures vehicles i think maybe it is but they sent out a picture of the front of the, of the 89 batmobile mm-hmm. and they you know they also worked on the batman and they're, and they're obviously working on the flash so they sent that out mm-hmm. and it, then it was gone which means someone probably at warner brothers said uh take that shit down you know didn't so. somebody show like a also a, a in, insert of the the affleck batmobile yes too? yes it, yeah i i thought it at first I thought it was the inside of the 89 car, but it's, it is the Ben Affleck Batmobile. So I would assume also that, you know, Ben Affleck's, you know, his role is significantly smaller than uh, Michael Keaton's as Batman. But I mean, I would be, would be any, uh, no, any reason yeah. not to have that Batmobile in the flash yeah. as well. If they couldn't cram it in there. Yeah. Yeah. I'm just it's so interested to see how they're able to, hopefully uh mesh like the 80 batman 89 aesthetic with like modern technology so they can get that batman looking like that batman but also being able to mobilize and move and and do you know basically kick more ass and make it look oh they could certainly i mean that suit the suit will have to i mean it can they can still, modernize it and yeah make yeah it yeah better yeah. yeah still look like the old exactly stuff. that's what yeah. i was yeah i was gonna say and hey um I mean, 
I, I'm the, that's the main reason I'm excited about the Flash. Even though I would I would be excited about the Flash because it's a DC movie, but Michael Keaton coming back it just it it blows my mind. And I also brought up I posted on Twitter, just like I know it sounds like it comes off as fan pandering, and I'm not a big fan of that type of stuff in general, but. It would be kind of cool, you know, like the Flash is going through, he's doing the Flash thing and and he's going through different realities or whatever and universes and, and then there's just quick shots of different uh, Batman, all the, you know, the live action Batman of the past and maybe, you know, Christopher Reeve or Linda Carter's Wonder Woman, but any thoughts When it comes on that? to Batman, I don't care. Yeah, fan yeah. service, fan show me everything, me all you want, and I am there. I will buy yeah. it all too. I don't, yeah. I don't care. Give me, give it, give it, give it. This to is me. the movie to do it <laughs> if we're gonna do it. Yeah, yeah. Uh, this is inspired by our our friend Peter Vera. But which yellow oval do you think it's gonna be? Because that that fandom image, I think you know it's a yellow oval on Keaton's suit, but it's kind of hard to see that bottom. It looks like the eighty nine one to me. Eighty nine. Yeah, it did. Yeah, yeah. I think they will go with that. To be honest, gotcha. I mean it's. And it's kind of unique with the extra um, what, what, talons or what do we call those scallops? Uh, scallops, yeah, yeah. So I, I would go with that. That's to me a more iconic suit. I mean, it's they're almost the same. I mean, the the return suit's more industrial looking with the plate the armors and stuff. But the eighty nine, I'm, I'm I'm looking because I'm looking at a poster of Keaton in the eighty nine yeah. suit hanging on my wall right now. So yeah, um, would uh, before we move on. And I brought up Linda Carter. Have y'all heard the rumor or the the fan the theory that with the multiverse that the character that cameo she did in Wonder Woman eighty four oh spoiler alert is is actually the her version of Wonder Woman just in this uh, Wonder Woman eighty four slash Wonder I mean that you know that Gagado universe Wonder Woman um, that she's actually. Linda Carter, Wonder Woman from the TV series, but you know what I'm saying. Am I? I, I yeah. I, am I explaining it the right way? If y'all, if y'all heard that, I've heard that, and I, I'm like, I don't. I, I think know. she is who's, who they told us she is. I was what I would say. Yeah, that's <laughs> yeah. what I would say. I mean, it, you can believe whatever you want. I guess. So yeah, um, that's if, the good thing about that, continuity. If you Unless, want that yeah. to work, then sure, go for we'll it. See, but, maybe I mean, if you want to break it down, I don't. Maybe think she it comes all back. Maybe she comes back, and and for the third one so all right so keaton is confirmed maybe people can stop sweating like ron lauer <laughs> yeah Who's... we'll stop sending emails <laughs> yes all right and the flash is filming according to the director and i always going to butcher his name andy muschietti am i right yes. muschietti muschietti yes. yep okay muschietti. yeah and then when they gave us a cool like a uh, little animated intro yeah social media thing with some score if you listen to it with okay with, with let me audio ask you on, there was music behind it it's when I first heard it, I thought I was talking to, to Lauer. I have to call y'all by y'all's last name because you're both Ryan, yeah. but I was talking to Lauer and and I said, when I first heard it, it sounded like a TV show theme. So then I went and looked up the TV show theme on one on YouTube and it it's similar, but it's they're distinctly different, but similar. Yeah. So and, and is it similar or am I just off base here. It's got the same kind of vibe, I thought. Yeah, okay. That's know. exactly what I'm talking about. So. They're all cousins to each other. Yeah. 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 Two different versions used in the Justice League films, the the Flash TV yeah. series, and this little bit here. I think it's all got a little it's got it's, some string. It's, it, it's very flash string. Flash esque, right? Yeah. Kinda, yeah. Does it kind of sound like what the Flash would sound like if he was music in a way? Yeah. I think that's what they're going for. <laughs> I mean <laughs> okay, it's got yeah, like like, I mean, my favorite, my my favorite one is the Danny Elfman like TV show theme, just because that like it just yeah nostalgia or whatever. But like yeah, it, hopefully they can get something nice and iconic with the movie, since you do have kind of Danny Elfman's other theme, if you can call it that, in Ju the Justice League 2017, mm -hmm. and then Junkie XL version, and then the TV show, and then uh, and then the, and whatever they're gonna they're gonna do here for this movie. So, do you think? I'm going down, just um, I, I something came to my mind. Back to Keaton. Do you, both, <laughs> both of y'all are on board with him staying on as oh, Batman yeah. after the Flash. How much Keaton we can get, 
give it. Give yeah. it. Yeah. I think that yeah. that really excites me for many reasons because I like him as Batman and Bruce Wayne. But also, I am a flat out Michael Keaton fan. Yeah. That guy is awesome and he's yeah. always been awesome. So, yeah, bring him in to shepherd this thing. It's something we haven't seen in live action. I don't even yeah. know how much uh, animated wise this this role that he's going to have that we've seen either. So, I mean, it's just it's something new. While we'll also get uh, we're also going to get our what do you want to I call our usual our standard Batman next year mm-hmm. with Pattinson of more grounded mm-hmm. in Gotham. So we're gonna have two versions that are quite drastically different. And so yeah, I'm, I'm excited for that. You good with um, maybe uh, some sort of riff off of Batman Beyond slash The Dark Knight Returns with Keaton playing the aged Batman taking on a training a mentor or a successor. He be, he he being a mentor to a successor, I should say. Batman Beyond's not my favorite thing. So, uh, not not I would say I would yes. call it a a like I said a riff of that inspired by yeah. also some Dark Knight Returns type st- elements maybe you know who says yeah, I also who, I'm 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 more open to live action uh, uh, versions or takes on things too than in like comics or sometimes animation. I so. And the fact that it's Keaton in that kind of that style of role. Um, mm-hmm. I mean, who says by Batman Beyond? I'm I, I'm there for it. Who says his sex? Uh, who says his successor has to be Terry McGinnis? What if it's what if it's Carrie Kelly? You know, I'm just just throwing that out there. Oh. I mean, because we have, I think because we have Pattinson's more. I'm not going to say traditional, but more like closer to the comic canon Batman. Whatever else they do is like, you know, whatever you want. Like, it's like we're having our cake and eating it too kind of thing. And then on the other side, we have Keaton. So Keaton's our in. Keaton's the in for the casual people and for the nostalgic fanboy Mm -hmm. people. And then they can do whatever they want. Yeah, like, give us a Carrie Kelly. Give us another, if it's Robin or whatever character it is like um as long as it's told well and and keaton is is a good element of that i think that's in a good spot like and and the thing that i'm most interested in here is that that keaton wants to do it like you know this is the perfect time for him to jump in because he's he's gotten the cloud as an actor again you know these past few years and and he's just having fun you know getting to be the vulture and spider-man and be batman again Mm -hmm. and do all these other things like I think he's just seems like he's having a blast doing this stuff. So this I'm this excited. isn't a project that he needs. It's it's his exactly choice. like he's yeah. he's choosing to he's do this. He's doing it because he he's, always like, he's well, done he's done Birdman sign. he's done Birdman and now he's yeah. back yeah. again. Like even after all that, like yeah 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 two twenty two twenty one whatever it takes. That's all, that's all yeah. I got on that one. So anybody get that one? Get that? Yes yes, Mr. No, Mr. Mom. The greatest yes. lines of all time. Okay. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Mom or Night Shift? Mm. I've never seen Night Shift. You got to be kidding me. I'm not kidding you. I'm not. I'm not proud of it. Multiplicity. You got, there you go. Yeah. You got <laughs> Jack Frost. Multiplicity. I'm gonna tell you right now. Night Shift may be my favorite outside of Batman. Michael Keaton movie. He, he is absolutely brilliant in that in that film. And if he's gonna be Batman again, he's gotta be Beetlejuice again too. Damn it! Well, who That's knows? What I really he want. might. This is okay. We're going down a rabbit hole. It's my, <laughs> it's, it's my fault. How about a night night shift too? Bring back Henry Winkler. Get Ron Howard to direct it. Bring back Keaton as Bill Blazjowski and Barney Rubble. What an actor! Okay, so speaking of the Batman that Haas mentioned. The Batman movie with Robert Pattinson and Matt Reeves uh, directing. Uh, this is a, this is a week or so old. It was on Batman on film, but I don't think we've talked about it. Uh, we we do know there's going to be a Gotham City Police Department HBO Max spinoff of the Batman series, and the most recent uh, report. It's not really news. It's, I think uh, was it Ed Brubaker who who's kind of slipped. And said that no, nah, it's not going to be Gotham Central. It's 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 uh it's like the James Gordon show. So apparently right. it's going to be focused on James Gordon, which means most likely um, 
uh, Jeffrey Wright is going to be the main character in that series. So what do y'all think about that? War Gordon is great and he's a great actor and he's no stranger to, you know, HBO series and everything. And so Correct. people can watch the Batman get, uh, you know, get an intro to the James Gordon in that film who won't be the main character, but is a, you know, featured character. Right. Mm -hmm. And then, and then he can kind of be people's in for the TV show. Like, I mean, it sounds perfect to me. Yeah. I mean, it makes sense that if you have a show based that on the Gotham police department, you would want to definitely feature James Gordon. It seemed, it would seem like a half measure if you're like, cause it would be like old thinking where it's like, Oh, we are going to do a spinoff show, but we can't, we can't use all the stuff from the movie because I don't know. But so now like the new thing is like, no, they're all connected. Like use as much as you want, you know? Yeah. It's like, they're so. going to do, they're doing a DC, they're going to do a movie. And if they can fit in some kind of spinoff or two of HBO max and set it in that world of, of that movie, like, like this with the Batman, go for it. Cause you got, you know, a peacemaker coming, spinning off of the yeah. suicide squad and so forth. So about you, Lauer, what would you like to I think see? It's, it, what, it, when you hear that, we're going to do uh, a Gotham Police Department series on HBO Max that's set in the world of Batman. How would you envision it working the best that, to your sensibilities? What would you like to see? Knowing, knowing that, and the, knowing that Gordon's going to be like the focus character. That excites me. Okay. First of all, I think that's also indicative. I think of how they felt the character's development as they're filming the Batman and how Jeffrey Wright has performed as Gordon, that it must have given them quite the, um, I don't know what you want to call it, some padding of like, oh, this is a great, he's he's doing a great job in this role. Let's expand it. Let's focus this series about him. Uh, I, I think you can definitely dip into uh, his personal life, the the juggling. It That's, I'm rereading The Long Halloween, go figure. And like that Loeb and Sale kind of capitalized on the, the toll that trying to be in this position in the city and ha that fighting the work and private life balance. And I think you can dip into that with Gordon um, because he said, I think he's such a fan favorite too. You take non-comic book readers, they liked uh, Gary Oldman's Commissioner Gordon in mm -hmm. the Dark Knight trilogy. And I, I just getting into that character a lot more, I think would be great. And then I'm one that when I hear Gotham, I want Batman. That's just how I am. I haven't read Ed Brubaker's yeah. uh, Gotham Central Gotham series Central. because I know that like it kind of like how wouldn't you make a series based off a movie? And it's like, yeah, but you're not going to get what you the Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. Yeah, but you're not going to get the Avengers. Then I'm just kind of like, well, that, that feels I, I don't want that. I want more of the Avengers. Then. And this I would want Batman. But I'm also Gordon is such a link to me of I will follow a series with Gordon unless it's literally called Gotham. Well, we and know then, Batman. Uh, Batman, <laughs> you know, Batman exists. This is your one. Yeah, it's your one. Yeah. yeah. Any, what's the odds of Pattinson showing up? I think, I think, I think briefly. even if it's not Pattinson, I think Batman could be yeah. in the show. Like, I think that's one of those things where it's like, it's not promised, but it could, it could happen. And yeah. I would not be surprised if there's Batman a much better chance the show. since it's so directly linked to the Batman and it's not just TV, it's HBO. I think yeah. definitely will get, they'll work the suit, the Batman in there somehow. Not for a whole episode following him or anything, but you see him, he jumps over a rooftop or he's in silhouette or something like that, I think. Or he's Gotham's integral to, to delivering some clue or something, or he's left yeah. Some, yeah. some information for Gordon or something, you know what I mean? Like, yeah. It wouldn't shock me one bit if right they filmed something while they were filming the Batman to 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 cut That's into a great idea to that show. Hopefully you know? they, do, they could do that. Yeah, you know, so yeah, I'm excited for that as well. Um, all right, so let's move on. Oh, quick question. Yeah, Have you heard ahead. anything about this Zoe Kravitz Catwoman series? It was never that one was never officially. That's announced. a rumor. It's, just, it's a strong that was just rumor. A rumor. That's okay. a possibility. It could be a movie could be HBO Max thing. I've heard also they kicked around some other ideas, maybe something set like an Arkham Asylum type deal, HBO okay. Max. So I thought I, it was stronger than just a strong rumor. I I'm thought, sure I thought they got a well, little further than that, but it, it may be a little further than that. I'm, I'm I absolutely. Don't y'all think that they've kicked around how, okay. With the Batman, we're going to have a Batman, the Batman universe. So what, 
what other type of spinoff we can do gotham pd we can do well catwoman's prompt i mean they could do a catwoman yeah i mean by yeah, name the, the actress is a very good actress yeah um it we're introducing her in the movie i think yeah you can go ways to keep her interesting whereas if you follow if you follow any any other villains from a series how far can you really take it but with yeah. Catwoman, she's always on that line. Yeah, and the fact that, that line yeah. that you can and do, do it hits it hits yeah. a lot of like other demographics in terms of like diff, different enough as another pillar of this yeah. universe that you would want to you know explore. I mean, there'd know. be a very I think it's an interesting backstory because obviously just and you know tune this out. You, it, I don't think it's a spoiler, and I don't post this stuff, but on Batman on film, but some of the. Uh, the set pics that when they were on location that you see you see her uh zoe kravitz is selena kyle she's with uh, Mar uh not maroney uh, uh carmine falcone you know and then you, if you riff off of what long halloween and that universe that oh, dark that that shot right there is freaking dark victory as far as how she yeah, looks yeah which mm. implies some things but i'm not gonna yeah. say it. yeah so you know how much is she part of the Falcone family, crime family, where, and what's her connection? I mean, and so forth. How, why did she, t you know, she's dressed up, she's with this mob boss, but but she's, you know, a burglar at night. So all kind of, you know, all, all kind of things. So, all right, moving on. And we're less than a year from the Batman. We're almost like at 10 months. Yeah. So it'll be here finally. Oh, I'm glad man. it's coming out. I'm glad this it didn't stay in this year and, and be an HBO Max and theater yeah at the same time release i really am i'm enjoying these hbo max release releases but batman I, the batman i want to see yeah i'm with you 100 percent. first time 100%. oh yeah okay let's finish up here um so some data has came out about the first quarter first business quarter of the year and apparently uh zach snyder's justice league didn't move the needle all that much in terms of HBO Max subscriptions. And this comes from CNBC and other business type um, uh, websites or newspapers, whatever, magazines. So uh, it looks like One Woman 84 did better. And obviously Godzilla versus Kong did, did better. So mm -hmm. just in general and how that relates to the whole Zack Snyder Justice League <laughs> experience we've gone through the last few months. Uh, you surprised, not surprised, on par with what you what you expected? And Ryan Haas, what do you think, man? I mean, I'm not surprised based off of the way that they've done things in the past. Um, like when Wonder Woman 84 came out, they announced the sequel, another sequel like days after that came out. And when we didn't hear that for for Zack Snyder's Justice League, and instead what we did hear or get was the immediate like Ann Sarnoff. Yeah, so that's, what, that's what I was going to ask I you mean, to get your thoughts on that. That, that, like, that was like the Monday after the opening yeah, quarter like opening of, weekend. It, yeah, instead of, instead of the, we're making a sequel, we got the, we're not making anything else. This is over. <laughs> like... When that comes from the CEO of Warner Media, like I don't see, I mean the buck stops there. Like it's over. Like that's what they're saying. I mean you can hashtag all you want, and yes you can because it happened the first time. There's no reason to think it couldn't happen again. But the 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 tone was drastically different between Wonder Woman and Justice and Zack Snyder's Justice League. Like they they're basically saying no, it's a one off. Like we did it. We're glad it's a trilogy. Like even weeks later, like yeah, the, yeah, HBO Max is still doing the trailers yeah. where they're like, "This is Zack Snyder's trilogy." Yes, three. Trilogy that's trailer. it. Yeah. <laughs> so, you know, I'm I'm okay with it. I enjoyed Zack Snyder's Justice League, but I enjoy way more than just Zack Snyder's Justice League and Zack Snyder DC movie. So I'm, so I'm not surprised. And and you know, Warner Media as a company is wanting to do more than just that. Mm -hmm. um, there's no re there there's no reason on paper to not also do more Snyder stuff in addition to everything else, but they don't have to. So they're not going to, yeah. at least that's what they're saying because like they've got the, 
the stuff that they want that was doing well, they're going to still do more Aquaman, more Wonder Woman. Mm-hmm. The Batman is its own thing. Affleck is going to be Batman again. Uh, the Flash is going to be the Flash again. Like everybody's covered except for Cyborg, but like that was never really. I mean, he, he could have been in the Flash movie, but he's probably not going to be. So like, why do they need to do another Justice League? Why and 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 if people were interested in New God stuff, they literally just canceled uh, the New Gods mm-hmm. movie. So they're yeah. saying that that is also not a priority for them right now because they've got so much other um, stuff going on that they don't think that they need to continue. Um, uh, basically, the, everything I got from that Ann Sarnoff interview was basically that they're trying to they're trying to take back uh, their oversight and ownership over their own IPs instead of letting the fans completely drive what they make and they want to you know be the stewards of the properties that they own yeah which is fine lauer is someone you 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 liked zack snyder's justice league and you liked bbs but i think you know like like ha said yeah you can hashtag all you want but if we just get if we're just brutally honest about it it's not like snyder's take on dc these dc characters is is just like universally beloved and in fact it was kind of the opposite i mean the the i'm someone who borderline loves man of steel and it underperformed at the box office and at at the uh uh critically bbs is what led to snyder eventually you know it started the the snowball of snyder being removed from justice league and the, you know all of that and then eventually and it's be and like i said if we're being really honest this happened not really because of the hashtag movement. It happened because they wanted advertisement for HBO Max. And 70, $70 million, which is a lot of money, but in the grand scheme of things, that's all HBO Max had to pay to get this huge four hour content uh, to help, you know, prop up, help advertise, help, you know, get HBO Max, the, the name out there. So it did what it was supposed to do. And there's just not, frankly, there's not this just this huge, overwhelming desire to see more of it, to be honest. And and yes, I mean, one thing I will say about Zach, Mr. Snyder, is that he did cast very well, even though I'm not a huge fan of Ezra Miller as the Flash. But I mean, that's just that's being that's petty nitpicks. But you still are getting, uh, you know, Momoa as Aquaman. You still have. Yeah. Uh, uh, Gal as Wonder Woman and and Miller as the Flash and so forth and some of that stuff. I know that now the Flash is going to kind of reconfigure things continuity wise, but you know, just just speaking I, honest. Yeah, go ahead. I think you're. I I agree. And as someone who, yes, I wrote on a review on BOF and I was on the review podcast episode for Zack Snyder's Justice League. I liked it and I liked it quite a bit. I've seen it a few times uh and that being said i feel the way that so it's being called a trilogy it's been received the best of the three movies i think yeah um, review wise and critic i think critically it's been re- it's this has been the best of the three that's been reviewed most positively um pending whichever site you go by i think that that that, that claim holds up and you should you should end it on a high note. End it with the best. Then, uh, yes, the leave them wanting more, but you don't want to just run something into the ground and uh, things lining up to where this could even happen. Um, certain events had to happen. Like, I mean, sadly, not like I'm praising the pandemic, but like be- I think because the pandemic happened, that they looked into we need content for HBO Max and we're. We can't create content right now because the world's kind of on a on a hiatus. What do, well, we've got this, but it needs a little work. Let's let's do that. And so that was their big claim for to bring audiences to HBO Max. And then they came up with the straight to streaming theater same day deal. And I, I feel like once they did that, they weren't throwing Zack Snyder's Justice League around anymore. It's like, okay, this resonates more because this will get more more people interested. I think we're hitting a bunch of different uh, genres with this movie slate as opposed to Zack Snyder's Justice League, which is not a, it's not a full on crowd pleaser. Uh, I know this from Batman vs Superman, and like mm. in my circle of like 
yeah, I know it's it's pretty crazy to log off Twitter and actually talk to people in person these days, but by doing that, mm. uh, previous Batman movies are always much more of a conversation than Batman vs Superman, and even this Zack Snyder's Justice League. So, I mean, that's just like I guess my long bout of I was pleased with it, and it's fine that they're going to move on. This this should be seen as a victory for people that really wanted it because it's sure. ending on a high, it's ending on a high note. Sure. But nice not to have that epilogue and not have that. I was going to say, it's ending yeah. on a high note and reach around. So what more? Yeah. Do you, want? <laughs> yeah. you know, it's been nice if someone hadn't kicked kicked the hornet's nest and then ran away. But um, yeah, I'm with you. And like I said, uh, the fans of, of Zack Snyder's DC reign will always have that, frankly, that trilogy. If they want to count it as a trilogy now, Man of Steel, BVS, and then the four hour Zack Snyder Justice League. They'll watch that as much as you want. You know, yeah. it's a lot of content. What is it, about seven hours almost? Nearly seven uh, hours? It's almost more than that. Almost 10 hours. Yeah. Is it? Or seven. With, yeah, almost 10. Okay. What? Uh, BBS, BBS, three hours. Ultimate. Two and yeah. a half, five, five and four. Yeah. Yeah, almost and 10. Yeah, you're right. You want to throw in uh, 2017 Justice League? Now you're over 10 oh. hours. There Especially you go. If you count it as the alternate version, yeah. Like the alternate <laughs> There's a multiverse version. there too. I yeah. still and I'm and I if you listened read my review or listened to my the the review show we did, I, I didn't I, I thought I was pretty fair with 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 my yeah, opinion were. of it and I didn't I didn't shit all over it like people thought I would and um you know and uh I'm just it's 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 it, it happened, it's here, it's now the Suicide Squad's coming, and the Batman's coming, and the Flash. All lots of stuff to get excited about. And the long Halloween is coming. It is Ooh, part one. Yes. Woo! Y'all excited for the um, Justice Society animated film? Yes. I'll watch it. Like, I watch. I buy and watch all those. You know, okay. I, I don't think Batman's in that one, so no. my excitement is yeah. a little less uh, amped than normal than it would be. But I'm definitely going to watch it. And and most of the time when I do, I'm usually pleasantly surprised. Okay, my. Some- yeah, go ahead, Ron. I'm gonna say World War II, also, right? Isn't yes. that where it's at? Yeah, and yeah. I am a. Um, I'm always interested. I'm more interested, uh, fascinated with World War II from a, from almost mm. any angle in yeah. reality, or you go superhero route like mm-hmm. comic book stories and mm-hmm. stuff like that. World War II, that era, just always interests me, and so then you've got superheroes on top of it, and they're not superheroes that I know. A, I really know I know they exist, but I don't know a ton of details with some of them. So that'll be that'll be fun and interesting to dig into. My my thing is I'm not going to start a hashtag movement, but I will bang the drum, or I'll just you know throw it out there. I, and I've talked about it on Twitter and other other stuff. I'd love to see, and on Batman on film, I'd love to see uh, a Justice Society spinoff of Black Adam and do it as a period piece, World War II type period piece. I like, wouldn't be surprised if they're like HBO uh, Max, the, Justice the, Society. Yeah, <laughs> like the way gold, that they're yeah. doing it, and the Golden they're... Age versions. You know, Doctor Fate. I mean, all you know, the uh, the Spectre, uh, all uh, Our Man, all those those original uh, uh, Alan Scott, Green Lantern. You know, do something Did like that. Did you watch Star Girl? I have it. Yeah, I, I, that's I, a big part of Star Girl. Yeah, it's very yeah. good. Okay. Yeah. So I think I think it, it's it'd be fair to say that they're working toward Justice Society in some way. If you've got this animated movie, they introduced characters in Star Girl, and they're uh, bringing them on the big screen in Black Adam. I think it's it's definitely possible that I mean we'll get Justice Society in some way. Yeah, I would. I think it would work well as a as HBO Max series so all right ryan haas before we get out of here um just get your thoughts what do you think about the long halloween animated part one you've seen the trailer Ooh. what's your thoughts and uh, yeah yeah i uh i did my the thing i usually do with these trailers people when when they came out everybody was like what'd you think of the trailer i was like no i'm not watching it on my phone i, I went downstairs <laughs> i turned the lights down i watched this thing on my tv like three or four times um i think it looks really cool and i'm I was pleasantly surprised that there was more uh, Tim Sale uh, spirit in the animation than I thought that there would be. Okay. Some people were instantly disappointed that it wasn't yeah. okay, more, gonna, yeah. but uh, it seems like they were trying to kind of match it a little bit to that recent Superman Man of Tomorrow. I wouldn't be surprised if it's in the same continuity 
Um, Archer animation. Yeah. I watched Archer. To me, yeah. Pete and I say that all the time. It's like Archer. Archer animation. Yeah. Uh, but but they but like if you do think so, some people were in, immediately like disappointed that it wasn't very slavish to Tim Sale. But then I was like, no, but look at like Joker. Like his teeth have like he's got like eighty seven teeth, and that's pretty <laughs> that's pretty close to like the the artwork there. So it was cool, and um, I'm so glad they're doing it in two parts. Uh, yeah, that's my that's, that's one hilarious. of my that's one of my uh, things. Hoss original. I say I say eighty seven <laughs> things uh, a lot, but uh, but it's true. And um, the one thing I was interested in was like oh, I kept complaining to people. I was like, I don't know the do we do we really need the Troy Baker uh, Mark Hamill impression for Joker in again in this? Like I don't know. I wasn't super sold on that, but I'm definitely willing to watch it in context with the film to see if it if it was a good choice. Um, yeah, and the Batman voices, all the voices sounded cool. And the, uh, it just seems like with two films, they're going to be able to take their time and make something, uh, you know, that honors the, the, uh, the story. As long as they don't do the thing where they're like, change the identity of the killer just because. Okay. I was, I was going to ask you, would you don't rather, do um, that. <laughs> okay. So I know what you, I think I know how you're going to answer. I, it, I, I don't, I don't mind when they take like like with Gotham by Gaslight when they when they change yeah. things because I've read the graphic novel many times and if I see a movie I want to have some surprises I'm I'm more yeah. of a, a fan of the inspired by type yeah of thing as opposed to the like what we got with year one even though I like year one I do like Dark Knight Returns despite the fact that Jay Oliva took my Batman card took away your fan card away yeah so <laughs> I still like his movie, uh, regardless. But um, so, are you hoping for a straight up adaptation, or would you like to see more of a inspired by? Which they the description after, was inspired by. You know? Yeah, after seeing after seeing uh, Gotham by Gaslight and Hush, I think this one warrants more of a closer interpretation to the books. There is, and there's still a surprising amount of leeway. I think that they do have. Like as long as like the major story beats right, like a lot of the issues in this in the in the comic book run are like faster things that you could like if you're writing in. What I, what I want to see is like if you had taken that story and somebody wrote a novel out of it and then filmed that novel, which is a kind of a long way of saying like take the major beats, make it work for that medium, but don't change a bunch of stuff just to change it. Like if they do change like major things, I for this one, I would want to see some like good reasons for it, you know, like make it work within the story because it totally worked for Gotham by Gaslight because it was a shorter story that they expanded. It mm -hmm. kind of worked in, in Hush because they were trying to fit it into a different continuity and they, and it was, it was its own, different thing and it, it worked for what they were trying to do but for this one i think it's their this is their chance to do another evergreen batman story on top of year one and dark knight returns so um and that since they are doing it in two parts i think that already kind of tells you that they're they're giving it a little bit more reverence and breathing room to kind of make yeah. a do that story justice yeah ron lauer any thoughts on that one We've talked about it, haven't you? you you've talked about I, it. I think you like this oh, story. I'm, yeah, I, I don't shut up about it. I think anybody that'll listen, I'm talking about the long Halloween in some regard. Um, I, I, I am one who I don't see the Tim Sale anything in that trailer. It's a trailer, though. It's less than two minutes of a two-part movie. I get it. Uh, but looking at it right away, I'm one. I'm like, ah, oh, like maybe resemble Batman just a little bit like Tim Sale. Like Tim Sales, give him some long ears, even or something. Like, like but six, six, six foot ears. Six foot ears. That's all I. Eighty seven teeth okay. on the Joker and six. Eighty seven. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but I mean that everything else about it, I liked what I, what I saw, and I think Jensen Ackles surprised me because uh, I like that guy. I've seen him. Mm -hmm. I was a Supernatural fan for a long time, and I, I was a lot of it was him. Him. I really liked him, and he did really good in Under the Red Hood. But uh, yeah, his voice surprised me. Troy Baker's Mark Hamill impression, I'm always up for. It doesn't bother me. Um, I, I think it's a very valid opinion, though, Mr. Haas. So I'm not saying you're wrong. Good. Um, I, I think that they inspired by it's it, that's a tough question because 
you have Dark Knight Returns and Year One both, I think, were from page, from panel to screen. Exactly. And I think they left two different impressions on people also. I like them both. I like Dark Knight Returns more. Uh, so this one, it's, it's, I'm not really sure, but I can say that they can switch it up. There are three killers in the long Halloween and they could just commit to one and it'd be different. Mm. So that, that change good point. itself, that's a good point. That, that change itself is like, okay, well then that's inspired by it. That's not directly adapted from the movie. So right. I, there are I think things I, that are still up for interpretation in the book itself, yep. right? Like, you yeah. don't know, like, I'm sure they could still maybe highlight other parts of the book in the yeah. movie and still keep it open-ended. Um, yeah. I, I think I keep I like the challenge of wondering where they're going to end it because uh, I don't know there's just a bunch of different spots that I think oh they could end it here they could end it here and uh, I don't know and I don't know why that that's that's what keeps me up at night I try to think where are they going to end part one of the long Halloween <laughs> alright let me ask you my, I have two questions then we'll go and this is, this is kind of kind of rapid fire stuff what what Batman story would you like to see get the animated movie treatment? Poss. Nightfall. It's been time. I, I, the, uh, the last time I, when I got to go to New York Comic Con for BOF, I got to uh, bug James Tucker and talk to him. I was like, hey, can you please, are we going to do Nightfall next? <laughs> like, please. And uh, he, he told me like, his, what he wanted to do as a whole Batman series was like, like be able to do like an anthology series where they were able to like take, like each episode is like different interpretation of like a existing story or something, so they could have the weight, the framework to do a bunch of that kind of stuff. But I think after after Long Halloween, I think Nightfall is the next one. Like that story is too important. The whole and, the whole three part Night Quest, Night's End, the whole thing. Hell yeah! And, okay, but okay. I think that, I think what they would need to do is it, it's it's a story that is easily uh, it's it's begging for a reinterpretation more so than some of these other stories. Um, when so like I wouldn't adapt the entire uh, like everything that happens in the comics. I would do kind of what the no Denny O'Neill's novel does. It takes the big beats of like those three act structure things i mean it is legitimately like nightfall and no man's land are both like batman epics where they require longer storytelling they require those story beats to happen to kind of uh show th they are big thesis statements on batman and you have to do those things or they those stories don't hold up so yeah mm -hmm. they would need to do nightfall night night quest and night's end for to me to make it like make sense for them to do nightfall you can't just have bane show up and like batman beat bane like that doesn't make sense unless you, and, and, and and uh yeah you can do that in like the dark knight rises because that's its own thing that's part of its own trilogy and stuff but if you're doing nightfall like you got to do all three parts okay lauer uh i i i have a tie uh i would no 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 no, no 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 <laughs> gotta pick this one. is rapid fire you gotta pick rapid one fire one. They have to commit full-on animation of making this unique and fitting the time era and period and everything of the Matt Wagner's Dark Moon Rising. Mm. Those would be great. Because I'm I think those could be such an atmospheric, really cool, dipping into almost timeless, but also look, some elements look very... Well, know, did you see that the... First the days and, yeah, the Bruce Tim short... A few years from a few years ago, that was like Batman, like mm -hmm. doing the Mad Monk stuff. Yeah, like that. That style I, that would be visually great. would just be awesome. Also, if they committed to it visually, I'd say Lee Bermejo is Noel. But anyways, Dark Moon <laughs> Rising. Dark Moon okay, Rising. Okay. Okay. Um, I have a lot. Uh, nope, just one. I, Bill's rules. No, are no, just no, one. no. <laughs> I am. I'm gonna give one. I said I have a lot. Um, Dark Moon Rising would be on my list. Nightfall would be somewhere on my list. I like the idea of reimagining it and maybe condensing it down to one story that hits all the major beats, like Haas said, I don't think you can do the whole daggum thing because it would just wouldn't work in an animated film, but I'm picking one. I'm gonna go off the wall here. Do the the Batman, Dracula, Bloodsport, whatever. Oh, yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah, Red, Red Rain. Rain. Yeah, yeah. Rain. yeah. That whole trilogy, the Red Rain trilogy. Yeah, that'd, that's, be, that'd that's, be awesome. That's my suggestion. So, 
Man, well, that's all the animation. So, ah, go ahead. Sorry, I want more Batman anime stuff. Man. Every time they do the Batman in anime, I think it's very like worth doing. It's a successful other exploration of the character. Uh, you know, both Gotham Knights, I think is what it's called, and uh, Batman, Batman Ninja. Ninja. I, I thought Batman Ninja was really, cool. They're really cool. Like they're worth doing. I like them. Mm-hmm. I'll just plug real quick. Michael Uslan wrote an article for Batman on film. I asked him that question. What would he like to see in adapted uh, stories adapted to animated Batman movies? So check that out on Batman. He has some interesting ideas. All right, last question. I used to We used to do this on the old podcast, Ryan Haas. And so I'm going to ask, what, what Batman have y'all done lately? And I mean in terms of if you bought any new Batman toys, statues, collectibles, whatever, what are you reading? Or have you been watching something, uh, putting in the in the Blu-ray and watching anything in particular? So what what what's what what Batman has been occupy, occupying your life here recently? Oh well, so I I've been re, we me and my daughter Nora we've been doing a big rewatch of stuff. Like last year during the pandemic, we watched all of the '60s Batman show, and we just recently finished all of the animated series and the new Batman Adventures which has been great because a lot of the it, those I haven't seen or hadn't seen in years or hadn't seen in HD, obviously. So we've been watching the Blu-rays and stuff. So that's been really good. Um, so we've done that. And I have, uh, for the Everyone uh, Loves the Drake podcast, we, we've we been covering Batman Legacy. So I've been rereading that story. Okay. It's, it's really kind of cool. And uh, I'm actually, you know, me and Pete, we've been watching the CW shows. I'm caught up on Batwoman. I've actually been really enjoying watching Batwoman this season more than I thought. It's actually better than the first season. It's it's It definitely is playing like that weird kind of like if a comic book got through a year and then they changed creative di- people and creative directions and but kept it in the same continuity, what, it, what would it be like? And that's what this show is like. Um, so it's kind of, but it's 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 a little bit more earnest and knows what it is and is executing it a little a, a lot a lot better than season one. So I'm you know I've been impressed by by Batwoman because it's not perfect, but every couple episodes that they do something that I'm like, well, I appreciate that, or like even though this isn't like for me exactly, like it's still cool and there's cool moments and it's still enough okay. to keep me keep me watching it. So okay. I'm enjoying it. Lauer. I, it's funny you just mentioned Batman Ninja because I actually bought the Batman Ninja Funko. I try to get <laughs> a lot of the Funko Batman that I can that I that I like, and I genuinely like that one. I think the the costume is pretty cool. I, I just watched The Dark Knight Rises. Ooh, um, it's a good flick. Uh, check it out if you haven't yet. And right now I'm reading The Long Halloween, and I uh, love that story. And then for an upcoming episode of the podcast, I'm going to be dipping into The Killing Joke. Okay. So there we go. Well, with me, I do Batman on film every day, so I guess I, that doesn't count. Um, <laughs> let's see. I have watched... Oh, I, okay. I know what it is. I, re, I reread uh, Batman White Knight because Ooh. about a week ago or a few days ago, my son, my son Micah, uh, texted and said, should I read White Knight? And I said, oh, hell yes. You really need to read all of it. And so he read it. And when I said that, I got I pulled mine and re- reread the original White Knight. And then he ended up recording a, a video review of it, which is up on Batman on Film. And he, he, he loves it. So now he's he's ordered Curse and he's going to go read, read Curse of the White Knight. Nice. And so I, that's what I've done other than that and other than looking on ebay and amazon trying to find stuff to buy bat batman related to piss off rachel that's that's <laughs> that's oh yeah i got this uh, i got this batman rise and fall the batman omnibus i'm not usually an omnibus guy but okay. i've got a few um and that was a whole and i was thrilled that they actually took that whole arc and put it into a big old giant omnibus so i had to get it nice so i'm a big fan nice. like there's a few ep- a years a few years ago we did a giant bof podcast covering the whole arc so nice I wanted to get it in collected form i well and you said ebay i did just find ebay volume three of legends of the dark knight jim aparo Ooh. okay yeah nice because he's one of the one of the greatest yeah mm-hmm. absolutely all right ryan lauer you can plug whatever you'd like 
please. All right. Um, I'm glad Pete's not here to show me up on this because I'm pretty rusty on it. But <laughs> you can follow my my podcast, The Batman Book Club, on Twitter at the Batman BC. Uh, both of these gentlemen have been on it, and they are going to be returning to the show semi this summer. We'll say this summer. Um, again, you can also follow or follow me on Twitter at Lauer underscore Ryan. Lauer spelled like lower, and go to BOF where I have a a bunch of posts uh, covering comic book reviews, animated movie reviews, uh, interview with Mr. Lee Bermejo himself, and my proudest achievement ever, a written review on the 1989 Batwing lamp on BOF proper. All right, Ryan Haas. Yeah, you can follow me on Twitter at SMB underscore Ryan and and the Batman Podcast Network at Batpod Network. And I also do stuff for BOF's Instagram on Instagram at Batman on Film. And I I did just post something on on BOF that Spin Master sent us some yeah. some Batman kids toys, and I got my daughter Nora into it, and uh, was it, they sent us like a Bat Tech Batman and a Batwoman and a Joker, and I let her open them up and give me her opinion on them. And she had the gave, cowl on. She gave yeah, she had the <laughs> Brave and the Bold Batman cowl. She loves that. She wears it around the house and stuff. So I had her wear that while she gave me her little take on what on what she and she loves these action figures. She's been pulling them out every day and lining them up and making them do stuff. Uh, and so we posted that on BOF's Instagram and Bill posted it on BOF. It's on proper, BOF, so. yep. Yeah, yep. so it was a, that was a fun little fun little thing to do for sure. So I enjoyed getting to do that. So check that out if you want to see like some Batman cuteness. <laughs> my my son, Micah, Brian, want, he wants you to come on his podcast show. Yeah. He's got, he's got to talk about video games. Because he's he's obsessed with the video game industry and video games in general. Yeah, and he I don't know if you checked out any of his stuff, but he just he did a he did a whole video on the Arkham uh, series. The Arkham yeah. series. It was and, good. Oh, yeah. Cool. yeah, and then he did one. He's got a new one recently that's about uh, just the gaming history business in general, and he was like completely uh, uh, blown away by the fact that. I knew someone who works in the video game industry, <laughs> you know? Yeah. He's like, you're shitting me. And I went, no, no. So we'll make that happen at some point. All right. So for me, you can follow me on Twitter at Batman on film. If you want just the news feed on Twitter. That's at the Batman on film. Uh, if you like what we do here, at Batman on film, want to help us keep it going. Uh, Patreon.com slash Batman on film. And um, all of the shows, uh, this show and Ryan's uh, Ryan Lauer's own little podcast, the book club and so forth and so on. And a bunch of others are all found in the Batman podcast network. You can check all those out at Batman podcast network.com. And it just so happens that the, um, the man behind the social media Twitter of the Batman podcast network is here. Ron Haas runs that. That's at bat pod network, right? Ryan I always have to yes. double check because I don't want to mess it up. At yep, Bad Pod Network. Right. So if you got a Batman related show or just as, you know, I guess comic book related anything. Really? Really? We're going that you have to have some type of Batman or what's our what's our rules there, Ryan? We, I would think it's like nerd nerd related. Okay. Not, I'm, you I'm know, good. Okay. In general. Hit me or Ryan up, we'll add you to the show. All right. So for the Ryans, I am Bill. Thanks for listening, and we will catch you next time. And Baba Booey to you all. Thanks for listening to the Batman on Film Social Hour, Jet's official BOF podcast and vlog. Follow Jet on Twitter at Batman on Film. For BOF news only on Twitter, follow at the Batman on Film. For Jet and everyone at BOF, I'm announcer Rachel. Authoritative, definitive, the original Batman on Film. <laughs>